afternoon, folks. We are filming today from the glorious Ephraim Library. Come and see it in this lovely little corner of Door County. We are doing a little bit about science fiction series that you can watch today, including, but not limited to, Star Wars, Star Trek, Doctor Who, and others. Rabbit holes I have known and loved. So, all right. The plan for today is to talk through a whole bunch of different series. This is not a definitive list. This is what I could remember as we went. All right, these are the ones that I really like. So let me tell you a little bit about them. Here we go. Star Wars. All right, so Star Wars, right? A long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, there was Star Wars. Star Wars, nothing but Star Wars. Yes, okay. Um, <laughs> All right, so 1977, A New Hope, called Star Wars at the time, because they had no idea they were, they were actually going to be able to make a whole bunch of movies, but yes, they have. So, number four, A New Hope. He started in the middle and worked his way out. Um, George Lucas started in the middle and worked his way out. A New Hope, The Empire Strikes Back in 1980, The Return of the Jedi in 1983, the Phantom Menace, then, so he wait, we waited a long time. Everybody loved the, the middle three. Then he said, let's go back to the beginning and have a nice conversation about this guy named Darth Vader. Only at the time we did not know that the bad guy, Darth Vader, was actually this adorable little kid named Anakin Skywalker. Okay, <laughs> so now we find out about Anakin Skywalker for three movies. The Phantom Menace in 1999, 2002's Attack of the Clones, and 2005's Revenge of the Sith. Almost none of the actors made it out of there with their reputations intact, except possibly Ewan McGregor, <laughs> who played Obi-Wan Kenobi. What do you think? Yes? I would give props to Natalie Portman. Natalie Portman, Nat it was never, Natalie Portman had other stuff that she was doing, just like, yeah. you know, but Hayden Christensen, his... I think he would be the, he, the failure of he, that. He, yeah, his career did not survive this beautiful thing. <laughs> so... Then we waited a while longer and Disney bought Star Wars. This will come in handy to know later on. Disney bought Star Wars, yay, from George Lucas, made all their money back when they put out number seven, The Force Awakens. Spent a billion dollars, made a billion dollars on this thing. It was fantastic. So Force Awakens in 2015, The Last Jedi in 2017, The Rise of Skywalker coming out this December! Yes! So stoked! All right. Yes! All of us so stoked. Um, <laughs> so, those nine movies then complete the Skywalker story. So, the first ones that we saw were the was Luke Skywalker and his story and his development with his father. Then, who turns out to be the bad guy, Darth Vader. Shh. Okay. <laughs> Spoilers! Um... Then we see how Darth Vader became Darth Vader. He was Anakin Skywalker and became Darth Vader. And then the last three, really, it's the story of his grandson, Ben Solo, who we now know as Kylo Ren, the bad guy in the movie. So we're going to find out how they're going to close it off. Very exciting. All right. So that's the story of Star Wars in a nutshell. What do we have available at the library that you can watch without having to pay for it? Everything except The Rise of Skywalker, which hasn't come out yet. When it comes out, we'll get it, I swear. All right. Of the standalone movies that they have, which are Rogue One, which is basically the Dirty Dozen in space. Um, that came out in 2016. It was fantastic. Shh, spoilers. Very bad things happen. All right. Solo which is the backstory for Han Solo, came out in 2018. Many people loved it. Many people didn't. Um, I was one of the people who really, really wanted to know how he met my favorite character of all time in the series. Um, the Millennium Falcon. My favorite character is the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> um, <laughs> what can I say? She's wonderful. I got all excited when I saw her on screen for the very first time in Solo. Um, but also how he met Chewbacca and all of these other things, where he came from, what his childhood was like, all of that good stuff. There are some people who really wanted to know that. I was one of them. I had a great time. So the standalone movies are also available on DVD at the library. 
49 libraries in our library system, okay? So it's not necessarily just one of our tiny little branches up here in Door County, but 49 libraries, somebody's got a copy of all of these things. There was also, yay, you've got <laughs> copies, um, the animated series for Star Wars. So these were television only. Star Wars The Clone Wars, which was seven seasons between 2008 and the present. Star Wars Rebels, which was four seasons, 2014 to 2018. And Star Wars Resistance, 2018 and following, two seasons so far. So what do we have? We have uh, all of the Rebels. That's all done. Of the Clone Wars, unfortunately, it looks like we don't have seasons six and seven available. And Resistance, we only have season one, uh, season two probably coming. And live action television, The Mandalorian is coming and it's not here yet. We're talking about it. Where can you find all of this stuff? Well, Walt Disney is building their own, their own thing. So everything that belongs to Disney, including Star Wars and all of the Marvel, our Marvel movies, are moving off of every other platform and moving on to Disney+. Plus. Disney+, Plus is coming live this fall sometime. They've been yanking every Disney property off all of the other things. No more Netflix, no more Amazon Prime, no more nothing. It's all going to Disney+. Plus. If you want to watch it and you're not willing to go for the DVDs from the library, you're going to have to pay. So, very sad, but very true. That's Star Wars. Moving on. Star Trek. Okay, Star Trek is wonderful. It's fun. All right. Many, many, many television. So, Star Trek, the original series, only ran for three seasons. This is the, okay, the world of Star Trek is a happy future for the human race. We have met other peoples and for the most part, we get along with them great, especially the Vulcans. Um, we get along with them great and we're moving out into space and we have formed an alliance and we don't need money anymore and nobody's starving and nobody's sad and there's only war in space, um, which is great. And so it's the adventures of the crew of a spacecraft. And they go out and they explore new worlds and meet new and interesting people. Yeah. New civilizations and bold to go where no one has gone before. In the original se series, it was no man, but we all know that there are women on the ship. So, all right, the original series with Captain Kirk, ran for three seasons, 1966 to 1969. There was a lot of shenaniganating. Captain Kirk was a horn dog. All right. <laughs> yes. All right. That was really fun. They had a short two season long animated series between 73 and 74 with the original cast. Yeah. Then, in 1987, and this is where I really came into things, was Star Wars The Next Generation. A Star Trek The Next Generation, my bad, with the brand new... James Picard? Ja no. no Picard? Yes! Oh. Jean-Luc Picard! Oh my gosh! Oh, yeah. He's still my beating heart. No, Jean-Luc Picard, who was... You know, so they actually got really, really good actors for this set. So for seven seasons then, the new Enterprise, which was the name of the ship. Did I not say that the, the main ship is called the Enterprise? Okay, the Enterprise. Um, the main ship then for the next generation, Jean-Luc Picard, who was not himself a horn dog. They passed that off to one of the other staff members on there. Um, <laughs> yes, yes, Riker was. Riker took over that half of the Kirk personality for this. Um, Picard was just very serious and very uh, Shakespearean. He's a Shakespearean actor, so very nice. Um, seven seasons between 1987 and 1994. It was great. Um, then... Deep Space Nine also ran for seven seasons, overlapping by a year, 1993 to 1999. Um, okay, so Deep Space Nine for seven seasons was different from the other ones because instead of being on a ship, they were on a space station that was orbiting a world off in the far reaches. So we had then people coming and going from this space station. It's kind of that... Um, that Rick's Cantina 
sort of a feel. <laughs> okay, lots of good things and bad things coming and going and lots of exploration going on. And um, for the first time, lead character, African American. Fantastic. Deep Space Nine. Um, then Voyager. So when The Next Generation ended in 1994, Voyager picked up, and that one, female character, uh, captain, seven seasons, 1995 to 2001. So Voyager got, oops, pushed way up the accident and pushed way out into the middle of nowhere. So instead of being surrounded by the Federation, the United Federation of Planets, um, they wound up having to come back and they're traveling through space trying to be there. They don't have any backup. So that was Voyager, seven seasons. Um, the Enterprise takes us back in time to the very first Enterprise and, and is four seasons long, 2001 to 2005, and basically had a lot of really fun bits and pieces, but was, was only four seasons long. It, um, it ran pretty, it was pretty interesting. Now Discovery, three seasons plus going on right now and was only available on CBS All Access, so a paywall behind which you have to, you have to go in order to see this. So Discovery then um, takes us once again back in time, mm -hmm. and we are looking at kind of the origins of the Enterprise and how it's doing all of these things. This, the Discovery is the name of the ship. So. This takes us, like I said, back in time to the beginning of the conflict between the Klingons and, and humans, the human race. So, very interesting. Ask me, I'll tell you all about Klingons later. All right. <laughs> um, Star Trek Picard, which I'm so excited about. Yay! And Mary's doing a yay on the other side, too. All right. Fall of 2019, Jean-Luc Picard returns to the screen with Picard. Oh gosh, I'm so excited. A whole bunch of, of people, of, of the actors from Next Generation are coming back too. It'll be really, really fantastic. Unfortunately, once again, CBS All Access. So that's the television series. Every single one of these series is available on DVD at the library. Discovery only has season one out on DVD right now. So that is what we have, but seasons two and three are coming and we will have them when the time comes. I'm sure if they put Picard out on DVD, we'll have it too. But right now, CBS All Access behind the paywall. Now the movies. All right. So with the cast from the original series, we have Star Trek The Motion Picture, 1979. Star Trek uh, II, Wrath of Khan, 1982. Star Trek III, Search for Spock, 1984. Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home, 1986. Star Trek V, The Final Frontier, 1989. And The Undiscovered Country, 1991. All right. Several of these are available on Hulu, but otherwise not. But every one of them is at the library on DVD. So all of those. Cast from the Next Generation did Star Trek Generations, 1994, Star Trek First Contact, 1996, Star Trek Insurrection, 1998, and Star Trek Nemesis, 2002, Idris Alba as the bad guy. I am so excited. So that was lots of, no, wait a second, that was Star Trek Beyond. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, make my mistake. All right, in the reboot with the brand new cast of the Just the Movies, Chris Pine as our, as our new James T. Kirk. Oh yes, it's so much fun. All right, <laughs> with, the, with the new crew, we have, <laughs> we have three movies so far. We have Star Trek, nine, uh, 2009, rebooting the system and making, showing us the origins of James T. Kirk and rebooting a whole bunch of really interesting things, but as a total reboot. Star Trek Into Darkness, which is basically a remake of The Wrath of Khan, which is 2013, hello Benedict Cumberbatch as bad guy, and Star Trek Beyond 2016, like I said, Idris Elba as the bad guy. It was lots of fun. All right, <laughs> we will see. All of these things are available on DVD at the library. Uh, we will see then 
what more they decide to do with this. They're kind of stalled right now as far as more movies, but they're going back and starting the television shows again. So that's lots of fun for all of us. So that's Trek. All right, Doctor Who, I promised you three. We'll see how far we get. All right, Doctor Who. You never forget your first Doctor. Oh my gosh. All right, so what we have, what we have, the Doctor Who is the Doctor. He's not called Doctor Who, he is the Doctor. The Doctor is a Gallifreyan alien. He's from Gallifrey. He's got two hearts, otherwise he looks exactly like a human being, but he ain't one. <laughs> He's an alien, and he travels around with a usually human companion, because he likes people, he likes Earth very much, in something called a TARDIS. Now, time and relative dimension in space, it's a time and space traveling machine. It's supposed to have a camouflage ability. Except when he was in 1960s era England, it got stuck and it looks like a 1960s era police box bright blue. So that's why it's a police box. Of course, this is British television. It's a police box because that's what they had available to them and they figured, you know, we'll figure something out. It was, <laughs> it was originally, it was originally built as as this story, it was going to be William Hartnell was the was the first doctor. He was very kind of stuffy and old mannish, and it was very interesting. Yes, very fun. Um, so William Hartnell as the very first doctor, but William Hartnell was an old man. So 1963 to 1966, it was great, but he started to get. They needed a new guy. Well, are they going to finish off this relatively popular television series in Britain? No, they are not. They're going to think of some reason how they can keep it going. So, Gallifreyans don't actually die when they die. Gallifreyans regenerate. And when they regenerate, they don't look like they did before. They could be younger, they could be older, they could be all different kinds of looking, various sundry. They could also be female. Not necessarily stuck with the whole male thing. So, Gallifreyans. Boop, 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 boop. Now, he has lots of different standard bad guys that he fights. The, um, the, the one that, the, the Gallifreyan who survived, the, okay, all Gallifreyans are gone. The Gallifreyans were wiped out, except for one other guy who calls himself the Master. Okay, he shows up every so often, sometimes as a woman. Um... <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Zoom! Right over her head. She has no idea. All right. So. <laughs> so, um, so every so often they had to regenerate. So they have, you know, they've got all different kinds of of bad guys that show up periodically. I think probably my favorite, you know, the... Um, I think my my favorite of all of them, the scariest of all of them, was the Weeping Angels. I'll get to the Weeping Angels later. Um, <laughs> but there have been lots and lots of different versions, many of them very, very low production value, especially at the beginning. BBC did not want to throw a lot of money into this, and so the, the special effects were very tacky, but it was lots of fun. All right, it was kind of a family thing. So Doctor Who has always been very family friendly, has always been on broadcast television, is not something that you have to worry about. Doctor Who horn dogging like Captain Kirk used to. No, 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 not a problem. All right. <laughs> so. <clears throat> 1963 to 1966, William Hartnell was the first doctor. Patrick Troughton, the second doctor, 1966 to 1969. John Pertwee, the third doctor from 1970 to 1974. Tom Baker, the fourth doctor from 1974 to 1981. He is my first doctor. I came in to the series with Tom Baker, and we all love Tom Baker, especially with the scarf. Oh my gosh, he's so wonderful. And... <laughs> Okay, so you never forget your first doctor. It was very important to me. All right, Tom Baker was our fourth doctor through 1981, the longest running of the bunch. So 1970, uh, 1974 to 1981. Peter Davison, 
was the fifth doctor, 1982 to 1984. Colin Baker, sixth doctor, 1984 to 1986. And Sylvester McCoy, 1987 to 1989, was the seventh doctor. Paul McGann was the eighth doctor for exactly one TV movie in 1996, and that killed the whole series. It had been kind of failing for a little while. People hadn't been watching like they had. And 1989, 1986, 1996, it was all done. You notice that they ended really in 1989. They tried to reboot with a 1996 and it just didn't work. Very, very sad. All right. You cannot get very many of these doctors and all of their exploits. Um, Amazon Prime right now has some. The, as far as DVDs at the library, Appleton has some, but not all. Many of them, they have a few of the episodes of each one of these guys, but not a ton otherwise. So very, very sporadic, but you can still watch them on Amazon Prime for like this much longer because HBO Max just bought them. And so now, behind a paywall, once again, HBO Max, those early doctors are going to be hard to find for free. They just are. But that's okay because in 2005, in 2005, a couple of guys decided that they wanted to try to reboot the whole thing. So 1996 to 2005, nothing. And then in 2005, Christopher Eccleston became the ninth doctor. For one season only, David Tennant took over as the 10th Doctor and was there for five years between 2005 and 2010, series two, three, and four. Do we love David Tennant? Yes, we do. Everyone loves David Tennant. All right. Uh, Matt Smith took over in 2010 until 2013, series five, six, and seven, and he was lots and lots of fun. When he regenerated, he goes, I'm a girl, because his hair was longer. And then he he was reaching around. He's like, and did nose. I've had worse. Okay. <laughs> so, no, it was very, very cute. Anyway, Matt Smith, the youngest doctor ever, did a wonderful job. We love him very much. Then, John Hurt. We know John Hurt very famous actor. All right, was the war doctor, not the 11th, 12th, or 13th doctor. He was the war doctor for one, really only one episode. He showed up in, like, briefly. You could see him in one episode before this, but in 2013, he was in The Day of the Doctor, where we find out how Gallifrey ended. It was very intense. They needed somebody really, really good, and they didn't want to make one of the other guys be the doctor who did this horrible thing that the war doctor did. Okay. So, John Hurt, the war doctor, one episode, the day of the doctor. Peter Capaldi took over in 2014 to 2017 for series 8, 9, and 10. He was much more of a rock and rolly doctor. Yeah. Yeah. And a big Doctor Who fan from the time he was very, very tiny. Apparently, he actually wrote a fan letter that they found when he was really, really little. So this was really fun. Um, Peter Capaldi then went through 2017 with series 8, 9, and 10. And then, in a shocking revelation, Jodie Whittaker, a woman, became the 13th Doctor last season for series 11. She is still the Doctor. So... When they move forward and have more episodes, we will have more Jodie Whittaker as the Doctor. I had seen her before in other things. She was fabulous there. She's fabulous here. It's really, really cool. So, Doctor Who changes bodies, changes actors. Doesn't matter. Still same character. Lots and lots of fun, always with new people that he's meeting with and always traveling in the TARDIS, who we found out during the Matt Smith years actually stole him. Yes. Yes. He thought that as a young as a young Gallifreyan, he had actually stolen this outdate, outdated TARDIS that was in a museum. Aha! Turns out, she stole him. <laughs> so, <laughs> there we go. Because she wanted to go on an adventure. It's a she. Yes. <laughs> so, all right. Big, big fan. <laughs> all right. So, three things. We're halfway through. 
halfway through our time. <laughs> okay, let's go a little faster. Stargate was on regular old broadcast television for a long time. There are movies. Stargate, the original movie, was 1994 and was kind of cool. Standalone movie, um, lots of de very deserty things. So here's the idea. So out in the desert, an archaeologist finds this ring. What the heck is this? It's got writing on it. It kind of looks like maybe almost like hieroglyphic-y looking glyphs, they call them. All right. But what is it? How does it work? He thinks maybe it might be aliens. <laughs> All right. Everybody thinks he's completely lost it. <laughs> Daniel Jackson, you've completely lost it. All right. So he gets contacted by the U.S. Air Force who says, you know what? We actually think you're right. We found some other things and we need you to come in here and we're going to see if this thing works. And what happens is that that ring that they found, they can make it basically create a wormhole through space to take you to other rings on other planets. So now you've got an adventure through time and space, not time, space. That was, that was the TARDIS. Space only, not time. All right. <laughs> so, but there are bad guys. There are bad guys. The Egyptian gods were bad guys. Actually looked a lot like snakes, and they jump into your mouth, and they gather up, and they grab your brain, and they force you to do all kinds of horrible things. All right. So, the bad guys are really, really bad, and they like to take over human bodies because it works for them. So... <laughs> You can't tell if it's a bad guy unless its eyes glow. Oh, no. All right. <laughs> so, Stargate. Lots and lots of fun. The first movie set the stage. Then it became a television show. So, Stargate SG-1 was 1997 to 2007. Went a nice long run um, with uh, Richard Dean Anderson as the main character. <sighs> so, that was lots of fun. MacGyver! MacGyver! Okay, ah, they said yes, okay. <laughs> then, uh, then they had a spin-off series called Stargate Atlantis, which was 2004 to 2009, and Stargate Universe, 2009 to 2011. All right, at the same time, once Stargate SG-1 had ended, they did a couple, a bunch of basically television movies. The Ark of Truth was 2008. In March, in July of 2008, they came out with Stargate Continuum. And then Children of the Gods was in 2009. So they did bang, bang, bang with the same people who did Stargate SG-1. They did these three movies. There was a web series called Stargate Origins that was in 2018, which you can watch on the interwebs, and an animated series called Stargate Infinity from 2002 to 2003. All right, you can see on DVD from the library the original Stargate, all of those TV movies, Stargate SG-1 and Stargate Atlantis, Stargate Universe nobody bought. Probably because Stargate Universe wasn't all that fantastic. Um, Stargate Origins, the web series, we do not have. And Stargate Infinity, the animated series, we also do not have that one. Um, but they are all available on both Amazon Prime and Hulu. So if you want to go looking, they're behind paywalls, but you can see them if you want to. Okay, so that's Stargate. Very exciting. Now let's talk about Firefly. All right. Joss Whedon, Cowboys in Space. That's what we're talking. Okay, Joss Whedon, Cowboys in Space. Imagine, imagine post-Civil War Reconstruction South as the, as the outer ring of a, of a solar system. The main characters for us, the members of the crew of the Serenity are the rebels who lost the war. Okay. If you touch iron, I swear by my pretty floral bonnet, I will end you. All right. <laughs> we love, love, love these characters. All right. 
This was a great, great show. High production values, very interesting storylines, very exciting characters. 14 episodes! You didn't even let it go a single whole season! And they canceled it! The horror! The horror! Oh! Oh! So, so, it's gone! It's gone! They did make Firefly the movie. <laughs> Okay, it's called Serenity, which is the name of the ship, which kind of gave us a little bit of closure in 2005. Not a ton of closure in 2005, but a little bit of closure in 2005. <sighs> They've been talking about rebooting it. I don't want them to. I think it was fabulous the way it was. You can watch all of these on Amazon Prime and the library has all the DVDs. Not that it took all that much effort to have all the DVDs for this one with 14 bleeding episodes. Oh my gosh. Terrible. Horrible. No good. Very bad day. I'm just doing... Well. <laughs> so. I know. We need the hugs. Okay. Let's talk about something more fun. Let's have fun with puppets. All right. Farscape. Australians. New Zealanders, Farscape. Okay, so you've got your basic American astronaut who accidentally has an accident in space and winds up getting sucked through a black hole and thrown into the far reaches of space where he meets all kinds of interesting aliens, some of them puppets. And <laughs> Jim Henson's puppets, thank you very much. Yes. Um... So that was the Farscape television show. It ran for four seasons, uh, 1999 to 2003. There was battling, there was excitement, there was lots and lots of space fights. Um, Farscape The Peacekeeper Wars was a three-hour miniseries in 2004 and basically wrapped things up since the end of season four, they hadn't really realized they weren't gonna get a season five, so they hadn't really wrapped things up in a nice, tidy package. Uh, all of this is available on DVD from the library, also on Amazon Prime. Um, quick note for everybody. So far, everything has been PG-13 or less, even with Captain Kirk. PG-13 or less. Farscape? Uh -uh. <laughs> uh -uh. There's a lot of hmm going on there. <laughs> um, this was originally shown on the Sci-Fi Channel, and so did not have to meet broadcast television standards. So there was at least the suggestion of substantial hankying and pankying going on. <laughs> and some very interesting things with pleather. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> fun, but for grown-ups, very decidedly. <laughs> All right, Babylon 5. I like Babylon 5 because Babylon 5 is a space station, a diplomatic space station. Post an awful lot of turmoil in on Earth and where you've got um, where you've got a whole bunch of aliens, many of them fighting with each other. But this is a disarmed space station where we talk about the stuff. But it's also a great big space station with a lot of very interesting characters. Veer, I can only imagine that you have not been paying attention. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> Babylon 5 was kind of cool because the guy who developed Babylon 5 had a story he wanted to tell. He took five seasons and he told precisely the arc that he wanted to tell and then it ended. He actually got a chance to tell exactly the story he wanted to. Production values are high, it's a really nice story, lots and lots of good actors flowing back and forth through all of this stuff. It was really wonderful five seasons long from 1994 to 1999. I watched it on the sci-fi channel. It was great. They did a whole bunch of little TV movies at the end they shouldn't have done this, but they did. In the beginning was 19, all in 1998 and 99, actually, as they were ending. In the beginning, Third Space, The River of Souls, A Call to Arms, Crusade, 
then was a spin-off television series, which again, they should probably not have done, but they did it anyway, which only lasted for 14 episodes. Go figure, they gave it as much time as Firefly, the travesty. All right, now, <laughs> The Legend of the Rangers was a 2002 television movie. We have available to us on DVD the entire series of Babylon 5 and the entire 14 episodes of Crusade. None of the little TV movies made it onto DVD for us to buy, or if they did, we didn't buy them, but we don't have them. But you can watch them all on Amazon Prime. So if you really want to watch all of those little extras, you absolutely may. They're on Prime Video. But the big central one, Babylon 5 itself, is well worth the watch. So you can pick it up at the library. All right. Now, the Expanse is ongoing currently. It is based on the novels of James S.A. Corey, which we also have in the library. The Expanse is the story of Earth in its own solar system. The only Habit, uh, the only inhabited areas right now with large enough populations to really make a difference is Earth. They've got, they have populated and colonized Mars. The moon has a substantial colony on it. And the asteroid belt has a substantial colony on it. Mars is very militarized. Earth and the moon have a lot of political power and are also pretty strong militarily. And they, those two are at each other's throats because Mars would like to break away. The asteroid belt is mostly owned by corporations and most of the people who are there are both very poor and very poorly taken care of. It is pretty ugly out there. You have to pay for your own air. <laughs> uh-huh, and if you don't get it, you don't get it. So. <laughs> So it's, it's pretty harsh out there. Um, so the Belters are, are definitely the third class citizens of this group. It is very intense. It is very interesting. The production values are very high. And, um, and it's, it started on the Sci-Fi channel and moved onto Amazon Prime when Sci-Fi canceled it. So it is currently doing season four. There's currently filming season four. We have the first three seasons on DVD. It is very intense. Um, one of the things I like the best about it is that unlike Star Wars and Babylon 5 and a couple of the other ones where things in space kind of move like things on the on Earth do through air, because they don't really actually, if you, have a, if you have something moving in space, it doesn't move the same way that an airplane does. Um, they actually move like you'd expect real ships to move, which is super, super cool. The science is actually pretty solid on this. So that is four seasons long and continuing and very, very exciting. And like I said, it's based on a series of novels. So if you want to find out what's going to happen next, read the books. Um, and then dead last on my list and not, not, as I said, a complete solid list of all of the things, Battlestar Galactica, which I Right now, I'll tell you, I never watched it. I just never got into it very much. Battlestar Galactica, basically, I know, Mary is just shocked. <laughs> All right, so Battlestar Galactica is, is the story of a, uh, of, of humans, basically. There were 12 colonies of humans out in space, somewhere, not here, somewhere, out in space, 12 colonies of humans. They met these basically, the Cylons were basically androids-ish, ish, androids-ish. Mm -hmm. So machine life, machine life, who decided that we were vermin and needed to be eradicated and they proceeded to declare war. Um, of all of the ships that got away, so the 12 colonies basically were exterminated, exterminated. All the ships that got away, including all of the warships that got away, everybody died. Oh my gosh, the Cylons were everywhere. It was really, really super bad, except for one ship called Battlestar Galactica. It's running away from the Cylons and fighting a rearguard action, trying to find the 13th colony. Earth. Oh, yeah. 
All right, so, <laughs> so that's the premise with lots of interesting characters mm -hmm. and lots of goings on and shenanigans, you know, various mm -hmm. sundry yeah. shenanigans. Um, I would say this is more of a PG-13 plus. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mary's watched it, PG-13 plus. Um, the original series, which was in the 70s, 1978 to 79, ran 24 episodes in various iterations. I did, I do remember having seen a little of it when I was in that age range, but that wasn't what my folks enjoyed watching, so I, as a little kid, didn't really get a chance to do much of that. Galactica 1980 had 10 episodes, so they tried to reboot. And then in 2003, they had a miniseries, which was a three hour long movie that they broke into four episodes which became the pilot for the reboot. Yes. All right, then Battlestar Galactica, the 2004 series reboot, ran for four seasons, 76 episodes from 2004 to 2009. All of this is available on Amazon Prime. And except for the original series, which vanished into the ether, apparently, we have it all on DVD. So you can watch it all on, the, on DVD and see all of the excitement as you go. I know that I missed somebody's favorite thing, but you know, this is, this is the list that I've got right now. Come and talk to me at the library in Sturgeon Bay if you want to talk about science fiction series or you have an issue with any of the things that I've said, come and talk to me personally. <laughs> I'd be happy to argue my point at even more depth. So thank you very much for coming and have a lovely day.